Hello and welcome to another episode of the Best Book Club. I'm your host, Saselem, a.k.a. Nufatora. And on this episode of the Best Book Club, I'll be discussing different platforms that the community is on and the impact that each of those has had on this community and this fetish. And with me today, I have Hans Gutherson and JCCW. Thank you so much for coming on, you guys. Thank you for having us on. This is a very good opportunity. <laughs> so great to be back. Thank you. All right. So I feel like the best way to start out with this topic is to go back multiple years now at this point unfortunately and uh start with the very first incarnation of our collective presence on the internet is with through wedgiegirls.com the board <laughs> the original board so Hans and I, Hans and I came up on it, but for I, I'm mo, I'm <laughs> entirely interested in hearing how what what your perspective is on it, JCCW, as someone who grew up on an entirely different platform way after it, the way you yeah, this board is coming where, on. This is this is definitely where I'm going to be the most silent in talking about this, simply because I just don't have anything to talk about. I didn't grow up on any of this. I just recently joined uh, Lucky Fetish, and like that's the only forum I like old forum I've tried to actually like getting in depth on. Mainly because I actually have an account on Lucky Fetish, and I don't have any account on anywhere else on a forum. But it's the one that I'm. It's just it forums are new to me. They're a new sort of breed. I'm not used to like. Mm having a sort of community that all know each other and know like, oh, that person's on, sweet, they're like a really chill dude and stuff like that. It It's weird for me. Um, mm. Even though like I've, like every single one of my experiences on a forum has been very positive and I can certainly see where all the hype was is when uh, Hans initially told me about them way back when he first met me. Um, like he, he recommended forums all the time and I'm like, eh, and then I finally was like, eh, fine, I'll try it. And I see what the hype is all about. It's just, I, I'm haven't been into them. Like, I never, I never started on them. So I'm like, I got no point of reference, but, um, hmm. I do know that some of the old school players, um, if people have heard, uh, other podcast episodes, my biggest inspirations came from AP and Hans who started out on these forums. So, if I if I had <laughs> gone on those forums, I may have been writing earlier and actually, you know, improved. <laughs> uh, Hans, what is your perspective on this? Yeah, the forums, I think, play a fundamental role in sort of prototyping what the community is going to be and also how the fetish is going to sort of uh, look, I guess, in general from the outside and, and for us within it. Uh I think it's worth, as you said, going back a little bit, I'd say over the last, let's call it six or seven years, there's been a major fragmentation of the community. When I think we're going to tap on this a lot, but just to sort of summarize and lay the context for the people uh, interested, we start on these sort of more centralized boards like the Lucky Fish Forms, the Wedgie Girls, to start the board, and then we go everywhere. And all these platforms serve different purposes some of them very specific and unique and as you mentioned you know, if there's different impacts that they can have on the fetish and its members uh the value of these forums is that people can socialize on them and you can also feel a real tight sense of community where you're constantly updated about new content where you're able to also chat with members and it sort of sets the standard for what we expect out of the platforms we go to. We want to have that connection to other people. We want to maybe have the rules and the structures. And we want to, if we're writers or creatives, we want to get feedback. And these forums can allow us to easily do that. And we meet this demand. And there's a group of people who we can get to know because we'll see them posting over and over again. And it's very easy to keep track of this. Uh, and... 
that you can meet these desires that we have. Typically, the sort of downside to these platforms is in our history in the community. Traditionally, they've been kind of niche. You have the people behind the sites. They have a desire for a certain kind of content. In Lucky Fish Forum's case, in the WedgieGirls.com site, as it's in its very name, they're FF-based. And as a response to that, we get like Wedgie Haven and then Wedgie Buddies, which are sort of MM. So the fact of the matter and i guess the problem with those is it's sort of limited if you're into both those kinds of content one of them is not going to be enough for you or if you're into just one of them you're not going to feel as serviced by it so in that way having a plethora of platforms is obviously going to be a great benefit too definitely and yeah you you bring up a lot of good points with it um and I'll make no secret of the fact that I, uh, I, I, at the end of the day, I definitely prefer a central hub, like a like fetish or a wedgie girls. Um, I, but I, at the same time, I do believe there are a lot of pros to having all of these different platforms that were spread out on that you did bring up is, uh, like there, there is absolutely, there have been, countless times on the lucky fetish boards where i i can easily remember where people would uh be posting something and then someone else would say you know this isn't this isn't uh female on female and yep. it's not what this is for and so being able to have all these different platforms and areas to consume content and express our fetish in different ways uh, it, it, I think it definitely helps grow and maintain the fetish in general. It, it's just an interesting look, really, at uh, how the the history of our fetish has come from going from hoping and praying that you would get some kind of something from a commissioned DVD or VHS tape, and then going to a a centralized like this is the end all be all of places to go. Like it, it, it was really it, the only place to go for wedgie content, and then going to a much basically a much more polished version of that with Lucky Fetish where we actually have sort of a standardization of things with specific rules, like no underage content whatsoever, and the actual specific rules, and we have specific boards for things, and like all that kind of thing. And then uh, as the time changed, it was there was, there was a, a male wedgies uh, aspect of the board added on, probably a bit too late, um, but it still was added on, so it was. It, but I mean, it, I I think there are basically there are I think there are goods there there are pros and cons to a centralization and a decentralization of the content. But mostly in my mind, I think it is better at the end of the day to have a centralization of all of it. Um, and that is only my opinion. It's only my perspective. And yeah, absolutely not. The I'm not speaking for anybody else. It's not the uh, the definitive community opinion. So going from these hubs, these centralized locations where everybody would come and you would have this community that you would automatically know who was posting when, and you'd easily be able to consume all of the, the all of the new content that was pr produced and then translating that and moving to all of these different platforms before even we get into all of the different platforms that we moved into I'm curious how the both of you feel about the fragmentation as Hans said the spreading out of this community into all these different platforms how do you feel 
about them in general and also how do you feel that it has had do you feel that it has had a negative or positive impact and if you feel like if it has had either one of those if you would go into specifics about either one of those so if either one of you would like to start with that you want to start jccw yeah i can i can start it um i would probably say like the the advantage of spreading out is just so that you can reach more people um it, it's one thing to like only be based in say california but it's another thing to uh, be able to go on tours to places like new york or ottawa canada or london uh uk it's nice to spread yourself out so that even though like even if you have your own solid base, like you'll always be able to go. You'll always be able to like have a good, have a good community of people you're around, but spreading out means more people are going to notice you and you may get a lot more attention than you otherwise would have if you didn't put yourself out there. But on the other hand, Hmm. does that, uh, does that spreading out? Do you lose sort of that really good solid community that you had? where I hear from you guys just how good the forums were. And I'm like, I was never on them. Like (laughs) I'm used to being on the spread out platforms. Like it's, 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 it's different for me. So I wouldn't know what the, uh, tight knit community like truly feels like, but you guys do. So maybe, maybe there is just more merit in having that centralized thing. I know, um, Noof does definitely want a centralized like place for <laughs> all of the content. <laughs> yeah, the super super forum with but that's, a that, database of all the content ever. Yeah. But that is why I truly appreciate your perspective on this JCCW because you are someone who has never had that, who didn't have that coming up on the community, and so it it's it's such a unique and opposite perspective to my own where if i didn't have you on here it would be incomplete basically because i would be missing an entire perspective of the community that is so essential to how it is now and so i that's i i love hearing these different perspectives about it uh, so it is it, hans and i both understand the value of having a a central hub but there is absolutely plenty of pros that we either completely miss or that we don't understand or that we just never see in our browsing because of how we grow up and how we direct our browsing that you bring to the table all these different perspectives that we would never have even thought to think of or come into contact with that you bring to the table that it's so it's it's necessary for someone who is not part of this to be part of it yeah to sort of jump in and it's a great question that you ask Nuff. i think i guess to your last point that you brought up for those of us who come up on forums, we have, as I said, they set a standard, but also for us a standard of curation. We have an expectation that, like, the content's going to be delivered to me, and I just have to log into the site, and I'm going to see it all, and I'm going to be updated. Mm-hmm. DA, sites like that, any number of social media platforms, we're going to chat about many of them as we go. With the exception of like a new platform like a Patreon, it's like you have to do a lot of active searching yourself to see what's new. DA, you're inevitably going to miss some stuff because of how it's tagged, if it's not in the groups you're watching, if you just miss it because there's so much content on there, including art, and it's all in one spot. It's all on your one page. There's no let me just narrow down completely for stories even if you do some searching you're still going to find that your search results are kind of muddied and muddled and stuff Mm -hmm. so yeah i to to sort of answer your first question though obviously there are sort of pros and cons to it 
to give some specifics. The pros are, yeah, if you're creative in one spot, if everybody's there and you know there's a lot of people there, you don't have to worry too much about people not knowing who you are. If you're after the recognition, if you're after the views, the comments, and the faves, there's going to be enough glut of the community that you can get that. And you'll have more creatives all posting and you'll have ideally a community that's feeding itself with content and positive feedback and a lot of growth just in general. More art coming up, more development. The problem though inevitably with any sort of board is the people running it. Um, as I pointed out earlier, they're going to have their own sort of aims for it. And obviously we could say everybody's flawed so the boards are maybe flawed but just historically looking at the boards they're all they've all been niche and served a specific niche and if you're not getting that on a board and if that's the only place for content then you're kind of screwed we've never had a board that sort of covered all the bases of the content and as you pointed out in the lucky fish forums was around for I think it's like eight years before they introduced the FM section. Yeah. So only then do they say it's kind of okay to have males, but not yes. really. And it was only too in late. A certain context. Yeah. And as as I said, yeah. like as I said, it was too late for that. It was it was a reactionary thing because the male in the the interest in male wedgies was already so prolific in the community by the time that that aspect of the lucky fetish board was introduced like at that time the lf board was already in major decline and it was only introduced way after the fact it was entirely reactionary it was entirely too late to save it I could see that, yeah. And I, I, as you guys know, I did some look just into the last seven months of the board. So January of this year to July of this year. And that's compared to last year, the same period, same number of months. So there's a 48% decrease in the amount of new topics, a 58% decrease in the amount of new posts, 44% decrease in the number of new members. And the amount of people who are online at the same time is down 28% compared to last year so the board at least recently has seen a big decline and those numbers pretty much track but i can't give you the specific numbers in the last like the year or two before i looked at those a bit before so i feel like but i can't say for sure if this is true that the format forum uh just in general is sort of dying off and we're going more the way of the popular social media platforms that younger members of the community are probably more familiar with. Just like uh, those who didn't find Lucky Fish forums as they were coming up. Um, they're probably not finding it now. And they're going to like the Twitters and the Facebooks and the Reddits where there's obviously a ton of people on it. They're not made for fetishists unlike the forums we're talking about. But basically any platform that's ever existed for a social purpose, we've found our way onto it. It's been yeah. my experience. It's hard for me to think of an example where this isn't the case, where like the big major ones, um, where we haven't made them our own in some way, posting content, um, just because that's what we find and we're trying to meet the sort of demands of the fetish, which is constant and always. Yeah, and so I guess uh, to bring it around to the actual topic of the podcast is how I feel that the purpose and significance of the Wedgie Girls board and the Lucky Fetish board are, and I, they really did kind of serve the same purpose in my mind, and they did achieve the same goals, they were there for the same reasons, is that it was the first gatherings, the first true gatherings, wedgie fetishists and they were yeah. uh the first places where people could gather who had the same interests and and truly understand what they were actually looking for to mm -hmm. uh to narrow down and specify their interests and to bring some kind of standardization to it all whether it was through content or through rules um, and so 
really, even if people have not experienced those boards, I feel like it's almost necessary to go through them with, you know, through the Wayback Machine. I feel like that's really the only way to actually do it at this point. And going along with that, I feel like the reason why Lucky Fetish died off is because it, while it is an evolution of the Wedgie Girls board, it feels like even myself growing up on it and coming to it at, from the Wedgie Girls board, it does feel like a relic of the mid 2000s, early 2000s internet, as opposed to all of these new, exciting, and user friendly platforms with all of these features that you can do all of these different kinds of things. And I feel like that is a major, huge reason why there is such an inactivity on the Lucky Fetish board versus all of these other platforms because of all of this user interactivity and all of this easy to understand and utilize user interface. Yeah, I think it's just worth noting too. I think that's a great point. But also like the reasons Lucky Fish forums has declined, I think are multifaceted and worth a lot of in, in like investigation too. There was a PHP update recently that makes stories basically unreadable and very yes. difficult to make new posts um if you're not aware of what characters to avoid so that's definitely going to drive people away and wedgie haven had a very similar problem as well before it went down they had uh, issues very much like that um the thing with lucky fish forums too is over the years usership was closed like you couldn't become a member yes so i mean people are just going to go somewhere else to find the content and if you're creative if you go to da you can get way more views you can get a lot more favorites mm -hmm. and potentially people commenting so that's definitely i think going to drive some creatives which we saw um yes. years back and that's just going to continue so that's at least three good reasons why the sort of forum oh. model isn't like and especially that site particularly i think has seen a decrease uh in like recent years i would i would argue your use of the word good reason i mean yes a lot of the people did chase the 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 sort of fame of uh favorites and views but i wouldn't necessarily call that a good reason no, because, I just meant and, it's it's yeah, a, I, I, yeah. a reason that is logical. Not that yes. it's good that they did and, that and that they ditched us it, for the numbers, yeah. I I mean when you do look at the uh the the difference in the interactivity in stories between the poster and the consumer is uh you do tend to get quite a bit more actual feedback on the boards, whereas with the with DeviantArt, I guess especially, is you tend to get a lot more views and favorites, but no actual feedback on them. And it's so, nice seeing that a uh, little favorite counter go up, but it would be it's always way better to see a comment. Yeah. yeah, I mean, in I, recent years, definitely on Lucky Fish forums, you don't have the same amount of comments. Like when we finished Flame Over Darkness, Shell Melder and I, not a single person at the end of the story said a single word to us <laughs> about it. But on DA, that's not the case. We had a lot of nice comments about it. And we had fanfics come out on DA. Yes. So, I mean, it's difficult to generalize, obviously. Right. But yeah, and clearly you and I, like you said, if we think about the years and years back, there was some nice engagement, driven a lot by me posting on like every single story on Lucky Fish forums, saying like this is great, or we get, and we would get some of that, and I do remember that fondly. But yeah, in recent years, it really hasn't been the same. Yes, po com stories go like uncommented on, and you get one or two people saying that's great, but one or two people is not much compared to like twenty thousand views on DA and saying exactly, wow, like my story is very popular. Even if I'm right. not hearing from people. And I maybe we I feel like if 
you and I were Hans, you and if you and I were to just keep, if you and I were to just comment on posts on DA, I feel like it would just sort of feed into the uh, the idea that those kinds of websites are better. Um, but I feel like we do sort of need a balance between them all because. I feel like forums are a little bit more personal and they are uh, able to provide a little bit more of a direct connection between people. Uh, there were absolutely, at, at a certain time, more direct feedback with through comments and, and replies versus mm-hmm. yeah. DA. Um, and it has definitely dropped off in recent times. Which is a sad thing to see, but um, even I, I guess this is me speaking from my own writer's perspective and someone who has posted a decent amount of writing at this point. I know that I would at least, if even if I were to get fifty thousand views on a story, I would way more prefer a story that only got say a thousand views and got five comments saying this was good and you could do this better like actually like actually getting legitimate engagement it like from my perspective i feel like a lot of people can get diluted and can get skewed from just seeing the views and favorites that their work gets as opposed to actually seeing the people engage with their work. Because it is so easy, given the fact that this is a fetish, and that this is, at the end of the day, something that people look to to get off on. I think it is so easy to look at it as like, yeah, I'm getting all these favorites and views, that must mean I'm doing really amazing work, and I'm doing really good stuff. Whereas, as far as I've seen, it is the entire opposite, where because people are looking to get off, they're going to look for the easiest thing to get off on, and a lot of the time, it's going to be something that is simplistic, and it's not going to be something that is going to be uh, yeah, that's fair. easy to get that's off. That's very fair. It's not some, it, you're not going to have to invest much of yourself into yeah and so the favorites and views purely because i understand why they're there i feel like is not entirely a fair point to give to people who are looking to create a bigger a true audience. Sure. You and I, yeah, ha- you and I, I'm, I'm only going to go for a little bit longer. I know I've been talking for a little bit, but only a little bit longer. So you and I both know what a true audience is. And JCCW, you have built up a true audience as well. Mm-hmm. The views and the favorites do not correspond to the actual audience that you have. It's like I, when I look at like all of the the I, when I look at the the stories that I posted, there is such a disconnect between the quality that I posted and what people are actually interested in. I know the stories that people are actually interested in, and those are the stories. I I I know the stories that people are looking at and rereading to get off on, and that is not. It does not translate at all to the quality that I believe that I have put out. So I think I mean, there is a major disconnect between it. I think that is a major con on some of these websites. Is yeah, there, there is no, I, I don't think there My, is a uh, true way to show um, criticism for the works that you're consuming as before. Yeah. Like, um, second, um, 
second person view stories are always a hit. They are always going to succeed on DA. However, that may not be your favorite one you've written. In fact, it's not my favorite one I've written. <laughs> my favorite one I've written has half of the amount of favorites that um, one of my U stories has. So, yeah, it's very fair. That's a very fair point. Yeah. Yeah. And it's funny to think like Fortunate Events Part 1 has 7,000 views on DA and your entire story has not even 7,000 views on Lucky Fish forums. So yeah, I think you maybe misunderstood my point a bit. I wasn't saying it's Probably. a good thing to leave Lucky Fish forums for DA because you're going to get more of an audience. But that is why people have left because they see it. Because is, traditionally... Yeah. You haven't been getting the comments. Like, you might get a couple. You don't get the feedback. And you yeah. might get, exactly. That's fundamentally a big issue of creatives. So when you're not getting the comments, you're going to settle for what you're going to get, right? Which is going to yeah. be the views, and it's going to be the favorites. You can't favorite a story on Lucky Fish forums, for example. That was my only point. Not like, okay. oh, yeah, DA is infinitely better. Yeah. Like I said, I have a great regard for Lucky Fish forums and forums in general for shaping the community. But the fact of it is the trend was people left the forums because they wanted to get what they felt like was more of an audience that they could yes. connect with people and things. And they saw a place like DA um, as their alternative. Yeah. And yeah, that is entirely uh, that's that is really the reason why. I want to do this podcast in the first place is because there are so many different platforms that fill, that fill so many different aspects and niches of the community that I wanted to understand why. And even before that, what those specific niches are that they fill. Um, but I guess I do have a couple bones to pick and <laughs> that I brought up accidentally. Um, yeah, it is. It, just real, real quick. It is interesting that uh, it, I guess it does kind of highlight my point of uh, that there are more people browsing these other places, and that I guess I guess I can't entirely say. It's hard to say. But it feels like, just given the fact that there are more and more people getting into this fetish daily, um, that it feels like there are more people just looking to get off, as opposed to people who legitimately. Why? I mean, what? Like, I'll be honest. Like, I do want to get off while I'm while I'm reading or consuming content, but. I also like to actually evaluate things from a from an artist uh, from an artistic perspective, and that's why I do this podcast. Um, but it is interesting that, like, yeah, the the entirety of my story, my main story, uh, has less than six thousand views. But the story, the the part of my story that I know people get off to most has at least double that in views it's, it's it's an interesting thing to look at yeah to clarify the first part of the story on da has 7000 and then the entire post of fortunate events on lucky fish forums is like 6800 basically yeah so and it's close but one part has your entire story but it is, it is, so it is interesting to look at, like, that is clearly a, an indication of the actual interest in each specific platform. Because that thread on that, on the, on that forum has been up for six years now. So... It is a huge sign that people have no interest in the forum type format. In the it feels like a, a relic of the past versus these new formats. 
where it is so easily understood and it is a the the user interface is so readily understood i guess I think it may be the difference of like mass attention versus dedication or like dedicated fan base, I guess you could call it. Yeah, I mean, I feel like that would be the case a couple of years ago, but especially because of the update to the forum, that can't even be the case anymore. Because it is such a horrible update, and you don't, unless you actually take the time to figure out what characters are good or not, it is, it just automatically is like, and who is going to? Yeah. Just because unless of you're Shell Melder and you make a post and you yeah. say like, here's the post. This but, you're right. Like I mean, it's that's one of the I think like I named three reasons I feel like in recent in recent months and like the last year that's a big one that people say I'm not gonna waste my time like Mm -hmm. I'm here to engage them if you're a creative that's extra work for you and it was Mm -hmm. work for Shadow and I when we posted throughout the whole PHP update thing we posted and then I go to a place like Wattpad and I post and it's so easy. Or I go exactly. to DA and I don't have to do any of that stuff. Maybe I have to make new paragraphs in my stories on DA because of the That's way easy. Word annoys me and stuff. It's not as much work as exactly. like I must make sure there's, I have the right characters. Yeah, and things there's, like there's no Same hidden... as like I said, the usership thing. Yeah. It's like if I can easily make an account, if I can hop in and engage with content quickly... Like, you can't read old stories now on Lucky Fish forums, a lot of them, because they're going to have these characters, and it's going to be very difficult to read, and it's just, it's terrible. It's like a big loss to the community in a way, too. Yeah, I'm, yeah, the, it, it's an ease of understanding of what's actually happening. Um, oh, shit, I had something really good to say. Um. It's, well, I, I don't necessarily believe, as far as I can tell, the, I guess it does affect it, the, the update does affect these, these stories, but they're still readable, in my opinion. No. I it's just, I guess it's just what you're willing to tolerate, and I'm willing to tolerate quite a bit, just because of, I guess, I guess that's just what I grew up on, is like. There wasn't much, and so I'm willing to tolerate quite a bit to get what I actually want. Um, the only the only thing I ever need in a story is a description of the underwear, and I'm good to go. Go back. So if you can do me a favor, go back to the uh, Lucky Fetish board and go into the second to last page and then read Bully Story. Or it might be the last story. Read that. And then tell me if that actually gets you anywhere. But that, for anybody who actually can do that, uh, yeah, that even that is uh, is enough for me. And so I, I'm I'm I guess to bring it back into the topic of the podcast is uh, I have my own opinion about the impact, the influence, how what it actually did to the community. I'll start with Hans. What do you believe is the actual impact, influence, whatever it is? What do you think? Because I think you can lump the Wedgie Girls board and the Lucky Fetish board together. What do you think both of those what was the impact or influence or whatever? What do you think that had on the community, Hans? Yeah, again, a good question. I think we sort of hit on this already, but they're the prototypes for what the community was to become. As I said, they hit, they sort of created a standard 
for us and what we expect of curation, of having content served up to us, those of us who come up in that community. So nowadays when we don't really have that, when Lucky Fish forums have sort of died down, and when you look at like a Wedgie Buddies and you see recent posts uh, where people are sharing the same fears and saying how come this board is so dead because it is um, compared to what it was with a lot less content, you want that more you want more from them basically i think also they're great pro types of just community in general i think that's why we maybe think of the wedgie fish community as a community it's because we had those boards to start on where we were communicating with each mm. other where we had chat rooms in mm. one place where we were able to sort of be together and talk and share in this fetish and like you said not be alone anymore because mm. we humans are social creatures and we crave connection with each other we also need to get off that's why we're on these boards but we also want to feel like we're part of something and the p forums let us do that in probably the most easiest and streamlined way of any social media platform or any platform where our content exists and we exist on every platform i might have known this already but any platform that exists we've sort of where content is shared and people communicate wedgies have sort of found a way onto them but the forums where it's very clear who's doing what and when they're doing it and there's ways to communicate and it's only one spot and you don't need to search different groups or you don't need to look on different th threads to try and find it I think it makes it really easy for you to feel like part of something. Um, and I think obviously that's going to shape how a lot of the sort of influential members of the community carry themselves and what they're looking to do in the community and the fact they want to sort of continue to, to shape a community even though we're as fragmented as we are. Like I said, me, I'm probably one of the most prolific creators but also posters of content and I have my stories basically everywhere that wedgie fetishists have ever been because i'm eager to sort of grow that audience but more importantly i want to try and bring them together in some ways and i think i wouldn't have that drive and wouldn't have made all the posts i did if it weren't for the forums coming up on them so i think generally i'm not alone in that i think there's a lot of creatives who if they're not posting everywhere, have sort of tried out different boards and are going to the DAs or they're looking at different places um, because they're looking to sort of share that community elsewhere, I think. And we got the boards to, to thank for that, I'd say. Okay. And so, JCCW, I actually did think of a, a really good question after this, but JCCW, for hearing all of these tales and legends about these boards for someone who didn't grow up on them i am very curious about what you think about the actual legacy impact what have you of these boards um as stated pre as stated previously my biggest inspirations came from the board so i do have them to thank for it um, but in terms of personal experience, as somebody who grew up on sort of just like just DA and just and like occasionally looking stuff up on just basic Internet, like uh, under a under a broad spectrum. Um, it would it, it does like appeal to me at least a little bit to sort of have a community of people involved in the fetish. Which is what I think I got um, in terms of like us being writers. Um, but I think that forums have been largely replaced by just online Discord groups. Mm. Um, in terms of like, it's not just in terms of like, it's turned not just from the fetish, but it's also just focusing on people as, you know, what their daily lives are. Like, there's a large fo focus on like, you know, the fetish, but it's also on like, hey guys, look at my cat. You know, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. Like, Thanks. it's it's sort of largely moved away from that. Like, if you want uh, personal relationships, you go into a Discord group now, or like, if you want a good uh, community, you create like a Discord group of like the most dedicated people you found, and, you know, you all share a lot about each other. That's true. And, and forums just for dedicated fetishes. As, as I've seen it, died out just like all, 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 
almost died out. Yeah. Um, or at least there's not as no. there's not like a market for it as there is market for just consuming content easily or at least easier using the platforms that you're already trusted uh, trusting. The only sure. platform that we have that's close to Lucky Fetish is DeviantArt. And that is so far removed from the forum format that it's hilarious. Yeah, it's, it's not. I, I, the forum I format is forum. dead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> We're calling it now, everybody. It, it's it's you don't even have to call it. If you are part of the Lucky Fetish forums, it's so easy to see. It is sad for me to say, and it hurts me to say, but it is true. Um, and so I I guess. This is this is another question that will uh, be that will that is will enrich the answer from two perspectives, um, from a side that was part of it and a side that has come after. Is uh, do you believe that we are? Can, do you believe that we can honestly classify ourselves as a community? So, like, with with the boards, with Wedgie Girls and Lucky Fetish, I truly believe that we could. Because everybody was in a centralized location. And everybody was seeing everything else that everybody else was posting. I, I personally don't believe we can. I'm curious what both of you think do you think that we can still call ourselves a community at this point in time with the amount of platforms that we're spread out on and the fact that there is so much content that none of us knows about or that there are so many creators that need none of us know about Yeah, I love this question. I, it's something I've thought about quite a bit. And I don't want to be like that guy who starts his speeches off with dictionary definitions. But I mean, community guy. means a lot of different things. Potentially, it could just be a group of people sharing a same place, which would be Lucky Fish forums. But even more broadly, DeviantArt, because even if you're not aware of everybody who's posting content on there, which you're inevitably not going to be unless you're constantly combing for new stories uh you can still join the largest groups there like girls wedgies and some of the others like underwear kingdom for example or two off the top of my head and you can keep track of like some of the content going on there and connect with people and things um and sort of form a community on there and community can also just be like sharing common uh, a piece of your identity, I would say. And for us, ultimately, that's going to be the fetish. So whether you're two people in a chat room or you're potentially thousands on Lucky Fetish forums back in its heyday, and that's the number of registered users it has, about 4,000. Same as uh, Wedgie Buddies, interestingly enough, around 4,000. I, you're still a community, whether you're, like I said, smaller, a lot of people together. Um, yeah, it becomes tricky when you think about, like, what about the people who've never been on Lucky Fish forums, never heard of it, who've never heard of this podcast, or even know Wedgie Podcast exists, and they're just randomly stumbling on content on Twitter or something, and they're just posting that they want more from the random video that they just saw and they're just discovering the fetish i'd say they're still a part of the community they just don't know it yet i'd maybe put it that way um because you're still a fetishist community i think also importantly is like we're looking to evolve and become better i think there's an active piece in it um and i think generally many of us are trying to push that in the community and i think that's another brief lead to state piece of why the forums were so important because they did give us rules for the first time and kind of the only time because da doesn't really have rules <laughs> for the community at all. and no platform really outside yeah. of the forums do have rules that are made by fetishists and enforced by fetishists and sort of <laughs> aimed at us specifically and obviously there are many problems around that as i think we'll get into does that sort of answer the yeah. question 
enough. Absolutely. And before you answer JCCW, I I think it because I would I would absolutely love like that is even I guess even more so than Han's answer. I'd love to hear your answer to this question as someone who grew up on these separated forms. Because I even hesitate to use the word fragmented because I think there is more good than bad in the fact that we have spread out so much. Um, yeah. So I hesitate to use the words that that give the connotation of negative. Um, but it is it, I, it is you you brought up so many good points of like even just the fact that like there is no specific uh, institution or place where people can look at to see this. These are the standards that we hold for this community. This is what you have to do. If you're not doing that, you are not doing right by this community and you are not doing right by humanity in general, which <laughs> I feel like the hu- the underage aspect does fall under is like you're not doing right by humanity. <laughs> sure, yeah. Uh, the one exception, I guess, to this is, and I just thought of it, was Discord. There's, there's some uh, Discord groups that do have strict rules. But it, that's not, this, that but is, it's, it's and, an that's, exception, yeah. but that's not an exception to what I'm saying because there is mm-hmm. no centralized yeah. place for people to go to at this point in time and sure. look at yeah, all. Yeah, because yeah. those specific Discord servers have their own set of rules and they will yes. entirely be subject to their own the people just like lucky fetish and wedgie girls they will be subject yeah. to the people who are in charge of them but i think one of the positives of that of the evolution of that is that the the people running these servers are way more open to these different rules uh, that that people feel are necessary. Like, uh, I guess I can't come up with a specific example, but, uh, like, they incorporate the rules that should already exist, but they also have uh, things like, like, I guess more specific rules, like no hateful or toxic speech or... Uh, discriminate like things it's just like, like more sp- they have been able to specify the rules i guess um and so i feel like there there are quite a I, few pros and so jcc i think that this now could be i would best love pro- to I, hear your perspective on all of this yeah i think this could be best explained with what my answer on the on like the state of uh like the so-called community could be um i'd like to describe it almost like an, a freshly made country where you have a bunch <laughs> of essentially states that all <laughs> sort of have their own like rules and stuff. Wow. Maybe not exactly rules, but like ways they go about doing things. Yeah. And absolutely. they all coalesce into what we know as the country, which is the wedgie community. They're all colonies. And that's I think the best. And, and I and I think that this is the best way to sort of describe it simply due to the fact that when we actually get into talking about each platform individually, every single one of them is drastically different. And what you do on each platform is drastically different. And Discord groups are a whole other can of worms because each one just feels so different than the other. Um, but that is just the way that you kind of got to look at it. And I wish all of these places could be more developed in their own, like subsections of communities. We just aren't at that position yet. Um, we're, we're sort of at there with discord groups, but like open ended, like just full on anybody can join the platform stuff. It's hard to build a community on that. Um, so that's really difficult. Yeah. All we can really do is just base our standards and do actions based on those standards. Um, huh. But that's sort of my answer on the state of like what the community is. I still consider like anybody who has the fetish is a part of the community because we all because that's the only thing that I think should define it is that we all have a shared fetish because a community does not always mean that everybody is perfect in there. That is never what community has meant. and no. It is never what it should mean. Absolutely it is not. that there are bad and there are good. 
but everybody has one shared common thing and that we all have the fetish and that's how it just should be yes amazing points apps i love i love that and and it (laughs) what i'm hearing from what you're saying is that you see fractured communities within this fetish it doesn't fractured sound, is negative fractured is, seems negative i would see I, so i, I guess, would see separate I, yet developing it doesn't sound like you quite believe that there are there there is a collective community overall among all these platforms it sounds I, like you it did, sounds I, like I, it, you say that there are individual communities where people have specific interests and they gather and then that is a community versus the entirety the, of the fetish where Hans and I came up on. Well, Noof, I, I, I hate to break it to you, but um, I said that anybody who had the fetish is a yes, part of a larger community. And that community. is true, yes. <laughs> yeah. and, so, that, so that's the only thing I base it on. Like, yes. And that's why I say like the community is just sort of a larger country while each, while each place is a different state. So you'll visit a different state and you'll experience something different, but all of them have the shared uh, thing that makes them all a unified country. Yes, and so if you'll allow me to adapt your metaphor a little bit, I'd like to say that each place is a colony as opposed to a state. There are guidelines, it seems like, at least from the places that I've been in, there are guidelines but not necessarily laws or hard rules. Especially given the fact with like some of these platforms like Discord, it is so easy to make a new account where like you can dodge, like if you do something that is against their rules, that specific Discord's rules, you can just dodge around it by making a new account and doing whatever you want. I have very intimate familiarity with that coming from a place that has dealt with a lot of that kind of thing. Um, So it definitely feels a lot more like colonies to me. And I definitely, I can absolutely agree with you that like the thing that draws us all together is the interest in wedgies. But I don't necessarily believe that that is enough to call us a community i guess what i see as a community at is a collective that is supporting each other and giving constructive criticism and actually building us up what i see is a bunch of uh, working off of your uh, your metaphor i see a bunch of different colonies and islands tr- straddling water and trying to hold on their own as opposed to coming together and working together hmm. yeah i love the metaphor and i think that's the fragmentation i've been speaking on as a trend and in- Absolutely. When I say fragmentation, I don't I'm I don't expect it to have any negative connotation. It's just the fact that we've become spread out. And yes. That's just the sort of word to use in that case. It's not a bad thing, it's just a natural occurrence that's happened. But I love this idea that there are many communities, so perhaps as people using the term and those of us sort of thinking about this, we need to maybe evolve our understanding of the communities that we, we're not just one anymore, and those of us sort of coming off of the forums are maybe biased thinking that there is one or there maybe ever was one when maybe in reality the community has been always multiple smaller communities like the mm community of wedgies and the it's a bit more depressing for me to think about like that (laughs) um i'm right there with you (laughs) but some of them but some of them probably don't have the same love that some of us do for each other and and maybe even some of us in this call don't have the same love for the mm community 
um, <laughs> and, uh, in the Fatora specifically. But, I, but when you think about it, it does. Oh, it, uh, when yeah, I, exactly. It, it does feel like that's a really it resonates and i think there's some truth yes. to that idea that there are there's the twitter community there's a reddit community and how much they overlap isn't clearly known and that's something that i think we maybe need to try and analyze more in general and see how how fragmented we really are because it's maybe more than than even i thought about which is interesting and that is the exact reason everything that you just said beyond the, everything that just resonated with me <laughs> yeah is that is the exact reason why i want to do this podcast and that brings me exactly to where i wanted to be and so we have basically described the role and the influence the impact that wedgie girls and lucky fetish had and so now i want to bring that around to what i feel is the next most important platform of this community is DeviantArt. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And so for both of you, I am extremely curious about how you feel that DeviantArt not, not just adapted the ways of the previous platforms, but also encouraged people to go out of their ways more um, and explore their fetish more, essentially. Um, and how it just encouraged a more diverse amount of content. I'm just curious what you... I guess really what I'm... What I'm curious about is how you believe DeviantArt had an actual impact and influence on the fetish as a general. Now this is my territory. <laughs> this this is where I this is where I step in and I can tell you everything that I please, know about this. Please do. So I started on DA with Amy Wedgie. And man was that just a treat. <laughs> It was a treat finally seeing some sort of wedgie content, no matter how small it was. And that led me on, what, six, seven years of straight up going to DA after school and just checking what did everybody upload. And it was, there was a lot of it. It was just a lot I could consume and I wanted to consume as much of it as I could. Even if I didn't understand who any of the characters were that were being drawn, or I didn't, or I was like, "Oh, that artist does some other does like some other weird fetish stuff," but they also do wedgie stuff, so I'm gonna keep checking in on them. I just consumed a lot of stuff. That was what DA brought to the table. Just a lot going, like just coming at you, and. Uh, you and sometimes in DA you found your little sub communities like um, when My Little Pony was really big that was uh, that that had its own little subsection in in um, in DA, um, but there are also just people straight up like they like stuff people like Magni coming in and uploading stories featuring his human characters, and that was and there was just a lot of variety on the platform that was where that was what da felt like for me so maybe that also is why i say that like um the diff like the shift between like i'm a little bit more open of the shift from forum dedicated stuff to more variety more varied sources of consumption because that was just how da was it was just a place where you could consume a lot of stuff um in terms of stuff like gaining an audience there or maybe people like find their stride only there and never branch out and stick on DeviantArt, I don't know if I can comment properly on any of those because it's, it's kind of hard. Like if you stick to just your own little subsection on DEA, like you'll grow exponentially depending on how good you are. But I don't know if you'd ever like gain the notoriety that like Hans has or and 
in terms of like like coming in after being on a forum and just seeing like DA have like oh yeah you see like Killer WC has you know 5000 watchers or something like that so obviously there's a huge market there but I do miss my sort of community of forum like that's that's pretty uh, valid I could say but absolutely. it's also like it's also like I I more understand that the reason that I feel so attached to DA is because I started there and I grew up there for years without knowing that anything else existed so i got really in depth into it and i got like very knowledgeable about who was on it and what they did so i felt comfort there so i i understand how it can be hard to see it to like go into da i know how hard it could be to get out of da um what the sort of appeal looks like of da and how you still are a little iffy on it because you know, in your mind, you may not care about the watchers and you just want to share your content. Um, but or you could be like, I want more people to see my content like DA would be the perfect place for me. There's a lot there's a lot of factors um, on that one could take as a user of DA. For me, it's a place. It's my main place to upload stories because it's my it's essentially my home for the fetish. So, <laughs> and that yeah. that's my whole viewpoint on it. <laughs> Hans, Hans, you, JCCW, to hear like your experience that you hit on isn't different from no for no, eyes. No, I imagine that, for no for Hans, just that... in general, because what it is is the discovery of content. Like for you, DA was your first site. For us, these forums were. So we have this great nostalgia, like you do for DA. But it's the same thing. For us, there was a great variety of content, as limited as that variety was compared to <laughs> DA. So for us, it's finding DA second, uh, we see a great, a gr much greater variety. And while it's harder for us to find the content there, that same thing of like, wow, there's different stories here. There's different creatives. We kind of see trends. On Lucky Fish forms, but not in the same way you would have. We didn't really have like the ponies, um, which is still a thing to this day, or like the furries. It was very limited in Lucky Fish forms. But a lot of what you're talking about isn't unique to DA, which I think is special and I think a good point. It's it's this the specialness of realizing you are part of a community and that exists, I think, across all boards. But sorry, no, if you wanted to, to say something. It's I was I was I was gonna try and talk before you did is a. Uh... Because I, I'm sure exact what I'm going to say is exactly how you feel about it. Is uh, JCCW everything that you just said about DA is exactly how Hans and I felt about Lucky Fetish. Exactly. That is right. exactly, yeah, exactly how we yeah. felt about it. Is we were discovering a plethora of content for the first time. We were yeah. we found this community that we felt so invited into for the first time. It, it was the first time that any of us ever felt like we actually truly belonged somewhere. It was... Well said. Every, everything that you said about VA is exactly how we felt about LF. And so in that regard, you didn't miss out on anything. Nice. It is yeah. only a matter of the yeah. fact that Hans and I truly believe that you missed out on the stories <laughs> that were put out at the time that they were put out. You can still go back and read them, but it is entirely different from actually being there. It's like the same thing as like being there when like Breaking Bad or Lost or whatever was being put out at like a tv show was put out to say like week to week you would not know what was happening and you're like oh shit and then you would discuss it in the comments or discuss it with your friends and like your experience with amy wedgie even was like that was our experience with like Seseda or anti cherry sure. or cosby rerun yeah. or who or yeah. anime panties later on that is yeah. everything that you said about da is our experience with Lucky Fetish with a, with a different skin, essentially. Yeah, there's a universality to the experiences and something we don't hear much on because we're yes, so focused absolutely. on like, what content is available 
and how you maybe, like we said, as Nuff pointed out, like whenever we talk about it, we're like, oh, you miss the luckily unlucky days. You miss sore winter yep. win for that every week. But I mean, yeah, fundamentally, I imagine it would be the same thing if your Wedgie Buddies or Wedgie Haven is your first site or Wattpad is your first site or Experience Project. We might hit on any of this. Or And you're realizing like, yeah, exactly. Um, and you're realizing like, wow, there's this world of content. I'm finally not alone anymore. Which is something mm-hmm. I love to harp on. So I know if you summed it up beautifully, definitely. Mm-hmm. So if, if nothing else, we get that out of this podcast of like, there's a uh, universality to this experience of discovering content and just the wonder that that brings. Absolutely. And so I'm curious, especially from your perspective, JCCW, what the influence and impact of like, just what the specific role that DA has played in the fetish overall. I think it's been, I think the role that has played is, is the starting point because all of the other places that we're going to be talking about, um, they're like, they wouldn't have been here there unless the audience that was on DA showed that there was promise on other sites. The biggest example of this Patreon, the killer WC like started on DA, got a lot of attention. And what do you know? Super successful Patreon to the point where he's making his own comic series that is not fetish based but he's actually thinking about getting it published and that's so cool like i'd say i'd say it's a perfect starting point for people Absolutely. it's where they can learn okay so i like this type of wedgie i like that i um like seeing this t- this girl from this you know insert media project here get a wedgie um I I enjoy stories more than I enjoy art, or I enjoy art more than I enjoy stories. It's a good starting point. Interesting. Yeah, I like that. Absolutely. And and to be entirely biased towards DA, if I had never jo- if I had never gotten big into it, because I was part, I was I joined it a long time ago, and I was like, kind of kind of like posting just whatever. But if I had never actually dived into it, I would have never found. Not just my favorite visual artist in the wedgie fetish, but my favorite visual artist overall in the entirety of creation, the Killer WC. I would not have found him if it wasn't for DK. Along with so many other artists, I would not have found them. And so... DA is definitely... It feels like an evolution of Lucky Fetish. In a sense, there's a lot more freedom, but it definitely felt a lot more splintered and fragmented and separated because it is, yeah. it is so much harder to find exactly what you're looking for. Like you can't, there is no, like on Lucky Fetish, there is a, uh, there's, there's a, there's a, a, a link to click on that says uh, unread posts since your last visit. And there is yeah. nothing like that on DA. Especially, like, you have the watch page and the uh, whatever the fuck the other thing is. But you don't have, like, <laughs> you can't see everything that every single person that does wedgie fetish art or stories can do. And so it takes a lot more work to find the people and content creators that you would that you want to actually follow. But I feel like there is much more of a sense of accomplishment when you're actually able to find the content creators that work for you. Like there's a, it feels like you've actually done something special in a sense that you've actually found the right content creator for yourself. Because every time that I have found or discovered or been shown a new content creator, it's been this basically moment of discovery is like, wow, 
I I am amazed by this artist's uh, ability, and I'm including writers in this regard in when I say artists. Mm -hmm. um, wow, like it is it is incredible that I was actually able to find someone of this caliber. It's like a uh, like you're finding a a hidden secret in a video game that nobody else has found before. A little mm. Easter egg that nobody's found before, and it's... There is such a feeling of reward when you find a new creator in DA, as opposed to LF. Yeah, I suppose enough to sort of, like, modify your question slightly. It isn't so much, like, what effect did da have on the fetish because it wasn't made for us but it's like how did we as fetishists adopt da what does it give us like how are we using it in a way that we couldn't use like i still feel like it feeds into that question i think you're right but i think because like it wasn't designed for us or with us in mind it really comes down to like what we were able to bring to it and how we were able to sort of absolutely make that it is entirely own. fair. So with DA, like you said, it becomes a great platform. If you are a creative looking to build an audience, it's a place to start where if you're not getting feedback on the forums or if you're just new to the platform and you don't know that there may be places where you can get feedback, they're a place where you can get some potentially surprisingly high numbers. And mm -hmm. there's creatives who would post their first story and they do great. They get yes. hundreds of views potentially <laughs> and, and some comments of them are... and they get saves. <laughs> uh, and some of them some of them don't. Some, some of them don't for a while. But and some, some of them are undeserved in my opinion. <laughs> That's you're not wrong. But some of them do it anyway, and some of them are exactly. really successful. Yes. So you get that. So in that case, as JCCW points out, it's a great starting point if you're creative yes. to build an audience. It's easy to post content. It's You don't have the sort of word limits that you have on like a Lucky Fish forums. Yes. If we're getting into the very nitty gritties of it. So as a creative, it's easy. But so there's ease and this accessibility. Just real quick, easy real enough. quick. Yeah. I need to highlight that though, is the word <laughs> limit is there might yet be still a word limit on DA. Not the one that we know of. Yeah. There might still be one existing. Sure. But it's much Lucky, bigger. It's much Lucky bigger. Lucky Fetish was a I don't even I still don't I I can't remember the exact character amount, but there was a specific word amount and there was no indication of it. There was no warning of it when you posted a story that was beyond it there was no way mm -hmm. to know that you were coming up on that character limit whereas with da and so with with lucky fetish you would have to once you posted the thing if you went over it you would have to go back and figure out where it cut off in your story and it was especially yeah. bad if you were someone who wrote and edited specifically in the lucky fetish word box thing as opposed to actually this but instead of just doing it yeah. in a word document or sure. google doc document or whatever um whereas with da you can just i have never run into anything like that i've always posted yeah. everything that i've posted without a single problem beyond oh shit i forgot to uh, italicize this part or capitalize this part. Like it was things that I didn't do in my own writing. Yeah. And so, DA is absolutely a more user friendly interface, and it works way better. Yeah. For users. And I think the significance of that is we see creatives embrace it, not only with the sort of PHP update where it's like, clearly I need a better format and a uh, shadow and I have said like the next stuff we write together. And just in general, it's like, we're not going to be posting on there anymore. It's not worth the effort of having to now deal with characters that aren't going to be 
uh, uh, usable and having to change all this. Yeah. And then on top of that, with, like we said, the lower viewer numbers in general and the less feedback because the form's dying off. So DA, great starting point, great place to build an audience. While it's there is so much content to find, it's made easier by the group's functionality and the fact that there are very large groups on there. There's clearly a large community presence there that exists in groups that has made itself known when some of the very popular creatives um so it's it's a great place to sort of be on and i think a necessity for creative posting um to find others and to sort of make your content known about in a very effective way i think it probably has one of the largest audiences Absolutely. in the whole fetish at the moment more than like uh, maybe any other platform especially if you're creative looking to sort of connect with people one-on-one -on -one and post a lot of different content it's it's made for that and it uh and we've really adopted it because it can serve those needs really well i'd say i'm so so from what i'm from what i'm hearing and from what we discussed it sounds like wager girls came about because of the inaccessibility of the previous kind of garnering content and then lucky fetish came about I feel like not only because it shut down, not only because the Wedgie Girls board shut down, but it was also because it needed to happen, and it would have happened at some point, and it it became the the board that Wedgie Girls was supposed to be, with the rules. Like no underage content, like all those, all those kinds of things. So like, and then DA was the evolution of that, where there was entire creative freedom with all of this. There was no, there weren't any rules, which can be a good thing, can be a bad thing, because it is so spread out. There weren't the rules that we had on the board and some of those were very restrictive some of those might not have been the best thing for the community some of those were a very good thing some of those things are ignored that should be enforced but overall i believe da is the true and better evolution of lucky fetish especially given the accounts from especially jccw who came up on it and you and myself, Hans. Um, and so yeah, it's worth it, noting, as JCCW sort of pointed out, like it's not for him, not an evolution of anything. That's a sort of like LF mm -hmm. bias coming up again, as it's so want to do. I don't know. We if see it bias. As like an evolution of anything. It is right. We see it as like this great place, and DA is like a next step in it. But it wasn't really first for a lot of people. Um, just for those of us who started on it first. But oh. I think to your point, yeah, DA, I think more than like being an improvement, it was a good place to go and it made some things a lot easier um, and some things harder, like we said, finding new content. But for our purposes as fetishes, we're able to discover a lot. Like there's so much content because it has such a large user base already of people some of them are just randomly going to be posting about wedgies and so many of them are just going to be finding it because the site is so popular as it is and I, that's what we sort of hinted at with why the social media platforms like the twitters and the reddits i think have such a large audience to begin with it's because people are just on there anyway um unlike a, a fetish board like unless you have the fetish you're not going to be on there but if you're someone who doesn't know you have the fetish um yet but you're on that board anyway because every all your friends are on it it's just a thing you're going to start using it for your purposes so da gave us that it gave us access or gives us access to such a large community and functionality that we never had before and i think i guess for some of us and even those starting out on it it creates a different set of standards it creates a standard that we need to have uh, ways to track viewership of content if you're creative 
or we need to have ways to communicate with each other like chats and messages which is where a discord sort of we see that as a a better way of messaging a more instantaneous and simpler format of messaging something DA a better with. way definitely a much better way yeah and it's the ways we interact and we sort of embrace these and why we embrace them and the purposes they serve for discord it really is because we want that community that we've talked about we want to be able to talk about whatever not just the fetish da it's a place for posting and consuming the content um which is a bit different from the forum purposes where you could chat with people and message and and you definitely have those groups and stuff but for i think looking at the fact we have so much uh so many views but not many favorites or not everybody constantly commenting and groups always forming i think it's a, a bit of a hint that people are there mostly to consume content which you can do in great amounts on da I mean, so i went that so because people were on it before us maybe a bit of a simplification to call it like an evolution of anything really maybe maybe it is maybe it is but i feel like using the word bias is inaccurate for this purely because all you have to do is look at the way that lucky fetish was and is and the way that deviant art was and is DeviantArt has all of the tools that Lucky Fetish did, and still does, but it has so much more. And bias, in my perspective, and what I've encountered, seems to be used. The word bias you seems to be used in a word in a way that connotes negative negativity um like sounds because, like something from someone who's biased yeah and <laughs> if I mean, what, what, so what no, let me way, just clarify when, that what, like again it's not a negative it's just I'm to sure say, it's like not. you enjoy it and you like it and you have a great nostalgia for it absolutely you know, to be true and it's the same with me but, and so when you look at things, you're going to look at it out of a lens of, like, Lucky Fish forums first, yes. EA second. Well, uh, but that's, not that's necessarily. I mean by that's, but when I yeah, actually... Yeah, sure, not necessarily, but that's when, what you've done this episode. When I... But that's... The, and that this is the point that I'm leaning towards, is that mm -hmm. when I actually started diving into DA and yeah. figuring it out truly and understanding how it worked and actually following artists and figuring out how the whole platform actually worked, that's when I realized that DA truly is a better lucky fetish. Sure. It's, and I'm saying that for the people who are, who came up on the lucky fetish board and are, who have that understanding of this is how the community works. Uh huh. Um, okay. I if I if I were to have a bias towards Lucky Fetish in this regard, I would be saying things like Lucky Fetish is better than DA or all of these other platforms. I think DA is. I think LF is better than some a couple of these platforms mm -hmm. that we are going to get into, but barely any of them. That's a bias that I have, but I tr I believe that DA does everything that Lucky F Fetish does better and has mm -hmm. more than Lucky Fetish has to offer. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I believe yeah. that is why so many people went to DA, because it is sure. so much more easier to use, it is so much more user friendly friendly there is yeah. more options to use to promote your art or even just to post your your art yeah there is so much more it is such a better user interface than lucky fetish i 
if we were to use the word bias in this regard, I would be biased against Lucky Fetish. I would be biased okay. towards Deviant Art because I prefer Deviant Art for actually posting content. Sure. What I truly okay. prefer is the content that is already there. That I yeah. feel like because so many creators have not made the transition to any other websites or they have they stepped out of the community before these other websites or platforms were available that they were able to post their content on mm -hmm. it feels like they're going to get lost to time and i that is definitely a big portion as to why i push it so hard okay because i don't want people to lose these stories that we'll I swear, we should we should not have uh, we should not have called this uh like talking about platforms. We should have just said forums versus newer <laughs> stuff. <laughs> I mean, it's that's definitely what this entire episode has been. That's yeah, what this yeah. first step. It's definitely going to split be split into two episodes. But uh, this that's the first that's the first episode is mm -hmm. debating, uh, not even debating because it is very clear that the other platforms are better than Lucky Fetish. It's just yeah we are that's what hans and i grew up on so we have all yeah. and that's what we we had the classic stories on there i so i really yeah and when i call lucky it, fetish yeah, could have had excellent. one yeah, lucky sorry, fetish could have had one um lucky fetish could have had one thing over every other platform and it could have been that it had true stories on its platform but um as we all know from the lucky fetish true stories um page that that's probably not the case i mean there it really at the end of the day no matter what platform you put it on there is no way to actually vet whether it's a true story or not unless you're actually there <laughs> so yeah who are we to little, say whether little did you know little did you know my call it my college days stories are actually all real yeah is there a way to verify you, it which one nah, are you in just trust story? me <laughs> yeah fortunate story, events yeah. is all true stories yeah i'm just getting All, the every detail single one of chaos stories are true <laughs> exactly there there is yeah. no way to predict on any platform whether it's true or not so yeah I, that, no, I, don't like I don't feel like that's a valid i don't feel like that's about yeah point. no i appreciate you you breaking down the, the bias thing i'm saying mostly jokingly in that we do love the boards we absolutely come i think all of us love them perhaps more than some others in some ways but i'm yeah i'm just glad that we are able to look at these boards and dive into the specifics of their values which is what we're here to do absolutely so thank you for that. yes and that it i think because they have been around so long i feel like it really does help us judge the true weight and value influence impact whatever descriptor mm. that you want to give it that that has had on the fetish with these newer platforms it is a lot harder to say because they have not been around nearly as long Excellent. as the lucky fetish yeah. board or the wedgie fetish board, the wedgie girls board or da or whatever yeah. So it is. It is a lot harder to say what the true impact of it is. Um, yeah. All the same, I still do want to try to dissect those things, and that is the true motive behind why we're here today. Correct. Um, and we have spoken on the Lucky Fetish board, the Wedgie Girls board, and DA so much because. They are so integral to our community, and from mm -hmm, those, yeah. the rest of the community has splintered and fractured and split up. And so now, I would like to try and give some kind of definition behind each of these platforms and what, maybe not even what influence or impact they've had but what niche they fill what aspect of this community they fulfill and what part of this community 
that they satisfy. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of these platforms have not been around nearly long enough to be able to truly judge the actual weight and impact, influence, what have you, of that impact uh, on that uh, the, of that uh, platform on this mm -hmm. community. So yeah, I think it is entirely fair that we can look at these. All of the there are many platforms. I think there there are a couple that we actually we have not stated that I thought of after the fact. Um, but I think there are many that we can discuss and look at as what actual role do they fill in this fetish. And so probably one of the most prolific at this point in time is Reddit. And so I'm curious about what both of you believe is the actual position and role that Reddit fills in the community. Um, it's for thoughts. Uh, so T H O U G H T S or T H O T S. It it is for the T H O T thought. <laughs> Interesting. The, the only <laughs> fan type type of thought. <laughs> that is because, like, if when you go onto r slash wedgie girls, you are going to see three posts, three types of posts. <laughs> You're going to see JR updates, yeah, some other up and coming creator, and then models trying trying to be able to appeal to wedgie to wedgie guys by posting a picture of themselves in a thong, and that is all you get. And it's like. You fucking whore! <laughs> like, <laughs> like you, you go onto her, you go onto her profile, and you see she, she's posted the same pic in every fucking other porn subreddit. And I'm like, you are just trying to get people to subscribe. But you do not fucking care at all about this fetish. Fuck you. <laughs> and it is. I've actually started blocking those uh, those types of accounts whenever I'm on Reddit and I see one of those. It's like, okay, I'm just gonna block them so they stop appearing. Hmm. And let me tell you, my r slash wedgie girls like update feed has been way better since. Uh, yeah, it's it's really it. You don't get a ton of awesome content from Reddit. It's no. just there for like updates on up and coming creators, which it's... is really sad. But that's basically all you get. I'll generalize it for you even further because I also participate in the fullback panties Reddit thread, and it is there. Are, there, are, there are very few times. There is a couple times where wedges are actually posted there. It is entirely for porn and to entice guys to go to porn websites like OnlyFans. That's entirely mm, okay. what it is. That's my experience as far as I've seen is porn. That is what Reddit is for. That's the niche and the role that only, that Reddit has filled in my life, at least. Whereas with other places, it has filled analytical perspectives and things like that. Hans, do you have... Yeah, yeah Hans, have do you have anything? Have you guys posted any of your stories on there at any point ever? No, because it doesn't no. feel appropriate to do that. It does not feel appropriate. Wow, so I'm out of the loop on this. You guys got to fill me in. So I posted my stories, um, on some of them, not many, and I post a little art on there. The response hasn't been great, um, generally. It's got some views and a couple comments, not much. I've gotten way more on, like, a Wattpad, for example, um, than on, like, Reddit. Uh, so this is interesting to hear you guys' thoughts. That's more just for straight up porn, and and yeah, yeah JCCW. I think your generalization is a it really fits with what I've seen. Just looking at the site right now, I've seen yeah that there's different groups, much like on a DA, where you can get satisfied for like if you're into MM wedgies, um, or if you do want to see a lot of different. Random videos of lower quality wedgies of women, the sort of amateur videos, so to speak, I guess. And then, yeah, a lot of uh, models trying to appeal to the community and yep. make some money off of them. That really does just seem to be it. I haven't spotted any like amazing stories or 
a lot of too what you saw on some I don't even know what you'd call them boards like Yahoo Answers back in the day stuff like that <laughs> where anyone could post anything you get a lot of like I do I have the fetish like Quora Q U O I R A like stuff like that yeah. like I have a the fetish what do I do and and like little stuff like that um or like is this hot and like to give a bad couple sentence story about like a wedgie or something like that so i mean yeah it's it's very limited but clearly some of the groups have a lot of members in them uh yeah so there's an audience there it doesn't feel like yeah the place to sort of build an audience if you're a writer or creative and it sounds like from what you guys said that's that's been your experience too yeah but yeah if you're if you have nowhere else to go it's a place for to see a lot of different like maybe art maybe not a lot of art mostly real life pictures and stuff i think yeah i mean there I there are there's 102,000 members on this reddit so it is yeah. one of the most well known aspects of this community which is sad honestly i don't like, know i'd say sad because look at the engagement you have 102,000 members and there is a straight up video preview of a of a couple that has twenty that has twenty upvotes. Yeah, something not right. There yeah, I mean there like, there's that. I mean that's right. always going to be the case whether it's a YouTube channel or an account. A hundred and two thousand. Yeah, something. Yeah, not right. how many bots? Might be a it's lot a, of like. like there's a difference that's between true. Who aren't having seven thousand views on a story and seventy favorites. To a hundred and two thousand and twenty upvotes. Yeah, something not right with those. I mean, I, I'm sure there are a lot. It, there are so many people, myself included, who scroll through the content and don't upvote it or downvote it just because it's not quite right for them. But they feel like it is. It does fit in this category. Like there, there's a lot of people who post in this category that I do not like at all and I block because I don't want to see it because it, it is uh, gross to me but I mean yeah fair <laughs> so but but, yeah. there are there's de I, there's definitely like there's t I'm sure there's tons of people who just have not <laughs> like, gone on a it in a long time or whatever yeah hmm I guess maybe it's I don't know. Sus. I don't see. I don't put too much stock into the r slash wedgie girls subreddit, which is the only wedgie subreddit that's act that's like worth anything. If you're oh, on yeah. Reddit and you're looking for wed for like wedgie oh, yeah. content, okay. I just don't put too much stock into it. Yeah. The closest, this is the closest one behind it is fullback panties. That's the closest okay. one behind it because it's yeah, in the that same line. Person, that, gets, that, but... just, that just gets now into personal preference. <laughs> Yeah, and it does fall in the same sort of line of underwear, but it is entirely there. Are, there are a couple times where they post actual wedgies, but it is very, very rare. So Reddit definitely does seem to be a porn place to go. That that okay. is the place to go if you need some porn. It's the um, so it's the uh, small town around. Main Street. <laughs> where you know there's a lot on there, but it's a lot of small stuff, and it's really a you're not going to invest any capital into this. It's cute, but that's basically all it's good for. Yeah, so yeah. My stories are wasted on there. Oh, Absolutely, yeah. Most of on Twitter, you... like I do, but Twitter is where well, you get the real engagement. Yeah, Hans, you would. Uh, they don't deserve your story. <laughs> oh, poor, poor exactly. Reddit boys. Yeah, I yeah, I won't go much more into Reddit. I've I've subbed to some groups in there randomly just to see. Like, there's an R Wedgie dudes group. It's exactly what you already said, JCCW. But it's just pictures of guys, um, <laughs> with wedgies on and stuff, uh, and that's it. And you get yeah, tiny little random porn stuff or little questions here and there. But yeah, there's. Yeah, it's it's nothing like mind blowing or anything we haven't sort of seen in other places before. Yeah, but yeah, the porn. I like the idea that it's it's where you go if for just porn satisfaction. Yeah. If, if you, you want to see need some to get off right away. Pictures. 
Sure. I like that. Yeah. Okay, so Twitter. This is a, this, this is a platform that I have no familiarity with whatsoever. I have never been a part of Twitter, so I don't know anything about it. I got I already shouted it out. Horny. <laughs> the people on Twitter are horny as shit, dude. If you want just like a lot of like if you're into like the the slave crowd or the um or like yeah or like you're into the oh this makes me so wet category twitter is for you because that's all it is <laughs> like it's you you get like I, I honestly no you don't get any wholesome content on twitter Born. you just get more you just get more. i can't think of any time where there's been wholesome content Born. the closest you get is blacklust fetishes, and that's really sad. That's sh- that blacklust fetishes is just posting porn. Yeah, yeah and true. they're and when they're the most wholesome, like people posting on Twitter, there okay. is something very wrong. So it yeah, is. it's true. I mean, that's the nature of Twitter. Interestingly, to talk about like the actual mechanics of it, because you can only have now two hundred and eighty characters, it's not. Uh, really a place to be like and here's a great long story i have written you're gonna have to link to somewhere yeah. else so it's an advertising platform if you're a writer unless you're doing short mini twitter length stories which i did do some of those in the past and we had a fun instance where like five or six of the biggest writers in the community wrote short little like really tiny stories on twitter and we did that, and we had like a little chain going and stuff. That so was me. That it's, was nice. it's marketing. That was JCCW. That was myself, <laughs> and there were a few others <laughs> like that. And that was fun, and that was pretty popular. But we never really did that again. Um, if you're like where Reddit, it feels like because there's these different boards, and you can post in multiple. I call them boards, but they're threads on Reddit, <laughs> and you can post in different ones. And and it is to it feels like a place with a lot of amateur content. Twitter, at least my feed and who i've been following there's a lot of professional models on there who are using yeah. it as their own advertising platform mm-hmm. jr obviously uses it to great effect i've been mm-hmm. able to use it to pretty good effect i have almost 2000 followers on twitter um mostly it's been a good place to shout out the widget talk podcast um mm-hmm. in a way it's an easy way to reshare content from other creators to help build a kind of community reddit has like the upvoting but you'll have to correct me if i'm wrong i don't think it has a function where it's easy for you to reshare content it's not Um, it's not easy to reshare at all so there you go so that right there is a cool fundamental difference in how they work and and what you can get out of them like you can create a community by resharing and also easily commenting while resharing on people's works and stuff um well as reddit you don't really get that it feels maybe a bit more focused on yourself and uh not about a community that might be a simplification but kind of how i feel about it yeah this is all news to me i I don't know anything about twitter (laughs) yeah Yeah, there's a lot of big models on there people just shit yeah you either have models or you have people shouting out their horniness into the ether that's true. Yeah, hmm. it's a it's a strange it's a strange conundrum. Twitter wedgie community is. It's like it's a good place to advertise. Yet if you actually yeah. want to use it to consume, you're unless you are the very niche group that are like a subsect of the wedgie community that loves more hardcore like horny aspects of the fetish. Unless you're in that group, you're lost. Like. If you want like a wholesome story with characters or you even just want to see like all you want to see are models, you're going to struggle to find a lot of that. Yeah. I mean, I've seen a couple of artists that work solely on Twitter. So it is interesting to look at that. Some are nice. But some are nice. It is, it is interesting to look at like Twitter does seem to be the advertising aspect of the community yeah certainly yeah and so going along with the social media aspect of these things uh, instagram is a controversial thing for a lot of us 
and I'm not entirely sure. I understand a little bit of it, but from my perspective, I was a. I just went into the hashtag for a little while, and then it was banned. Something like that. I wasn't able to see it anymore. And I know there was a lot of underage content posted on it. Yeah. Uh, what, which one are we doing again? I did Instagram. I Instagram. Instagram. Okay. Yeah. It, it got out a little bit for me, but so I was just making sure again. But yeah. Oh, Insta. If if you follow people on Insta in the community, you're gonna you're gonna hear one. You're gonna see one message pop up on all the stories. Um. Female slaves hit me up in your DMs. <laughs> it, yeah. And gosh dang it. I swear if that actually works, that's not healthy. <laughs> it doesn't that work. It can't be healthy. It doesn't work. I, thank fuck it doesn't work. It doesn't deserve to work. It Gosh, it. I say Twitter's for the horny, and that's because it's the most obvious with it. But Instagram, Instagram users are on a whole different level. Like they, they, they keep their horn. They are strong in the horny, but they try and hide it, and it's not obvious, and it makes me cringe. Mm. Gosh, is there is there actually a single good Instagram wedgie Instagram wedgie account? I think there's like, I think the best are just people who advertise their content on there. Yeah, I think that must be accurate. There's going to be a lot of the same amateur self wedgy stuff that you see, and a lot of that people just... And it's such a weird place to do it, like, instead of, like, the Quora's and the... Even Yahoo Answers back in the day, like, a place to... And, like, and on any site that there's been fetishes, especially, like, Twitters and stuff, there's a lot of people on YouTube who say, like, oh, I want wedgy slaves wanted or whatever, like... It's such a. It's so weird that the same terminology keeps getting used and passed down. Like years <laughs> later, we're still seeing people do that. It's bizarre. It's if they think someone, it must have worked for somebody. So now I'm gonna try it. Um, but yeah, like just scrolling through Instagram now, I see like a piece of art from Magni Pulls. Um, uh, but other than that, it's a lot of like smaller, not even smaller, but different self wedgie stuff. Yeah. I mean, there is definitely, it was good back in the day, I feel like. There was a lot of good stuff, and then. It, and I'm not sure if there was it. I, I, maybe I got onto it at the wrong time, but I don't think there was barely any good. I think, you know what, no, actually no. There was a period of time where Instagram was a really hot place to go to. Yeah. And when there was a lot of, like, really active big members, like, without Violet. She was an absolute queen oh, yeah. of wedgie Instagram. Mm -hmm. It's just that she's not as active anymore, so it really stinks. Yeah, she was really good. Like, really good. She, like, she could have single-handedly ruled the entire Insta, like, wedgie Well, community. she did. She did. Yeah, she basically did. <laughs> <laughs> I, uh, it really stinks it, nowadays, because it's like, she's not as active, so it's like... There Whoa. are... Now there, are we on here? There are theories that she's the same person as uh, someone from before. Um, she. I, I won't. I, I won't specify what before, theories, but... but I know exactly. There are some people who believe that she is someone from before. It, yeah, that's a, that's a whole other thing. So, what's next on our list of platforms after Instagram? Well, YouTube. Okay. Just as bad of a um, platform. Yeah. Awkward is what I could call it. <laughs> yeah, just as bad of a platform. Yeah, it's really awkward. Like, there's a new there's new channels popping up all the time, yet they repost the exact same videos. Yep. Uh huh. Yeah. But there was a heyday where there was the Shelby video. There was the uh, old JR videos with Fox. There was uh, the Crane wedgie video. There was all kinds of things. It's just deserves a mention, content. at least. It's like posting paid content and podcast episodes. 
That's what it gets to, guys. <laughs> that's There's what it's become. Podcast episodes. Yeah. But that's certainly what it's become, yeah, in recent But, like, years, when that's it's all that, it offers, it's like you yeah. kind of want a little bit of variety from a video-sharing site. Yeah. But, no, not at all. And that, that's kind of... I find it a little sad. It's like there should be more. It feels like YouTube has also lost potential. It's Absolutely. Awkward, but like it could have been so good. Mm. Mm. Yeah. I think that's a good way to sum it up. I mean, there's so much underage content that becomes controversial because it's mentions from kids' TV shows and things. And in mm -hmm. some ways, like, it's a collection of the stuff that would have been formative for many of us and watching it's like this is the stuff we saw and then realized we were into the fetish but then at mm -hmm. the same time it's like it's not good for it to be there for us from for like a fetishist perspective and for us to yep. be looking at this stuff and things so it's kind of problematic in a complicated way and then yeah there's a lot of obviously it, it was in the past and still kind of is the biggest place where people would post stolen videos. And obviously that hurts the creatives making these videos if they know their videos are just being reposted on YouTube. So that's not great. And yeah, nowadays if you're not finding random mentions from TV shows, which it's good for as long as they're not underage, and as long as they're not just reposting old videos that they shouldn't be, then it's tricky. I have a channel where I've commissioned a few videos, and I'm one of the few channels that has original wedgie content that I know I've commissioned that I haven't stolen from somebody else. Um, mm -hmm. And in that way, it's good. I'm slowly kind of building an audience. I have the podcast. I'm at like some more than 700 subscribers if i reach a thousand i start making money yay which is a cool yay. promise but i mean it's tricky to do it's expensive if you want to be posting videos um if you're it's it feels like it could be a cool next i guess evolution so to speak because we could use it maybe as a place to post videos of us doing like playthroughs of like between two cheeks is um video games for example why did or, we not think of that? I've been wanting to do that for a while. Do like let's play videos. I guess Twitch is maybe a better option for that when you think about it. But maybe you want to put them on both to get more of an audience. Um, and stuff like that. If there's ever like legit cool wedgie films about the wedgie fetishes struggle. Um, YouTube would be a great place for stuff like that to, to find. And, and even Shadow Melder the other day posted a video of in sims 2 you can give wedgies in that game you post a video it's already blown up already has like 500 views and it's been like 48 hours or something so we, there's people can there. we talk about views for a second absolutely yeah. because there's the occasional time where a paid wed for a um a wedgie video that you need to pay for gets um uploaded onto youtube and it gets 2.6 million views yeah totally and that just makes me feel so awkward. <laughs> I don't know if about you, you guys. Through the comments back when they like comments were always around, and now the thing also with YouTube is a lot of stuff's changed. They've made it like they banned a lot of content, uh, obviously because of the underage issues they were having and things. But yeah, the fact it gets that many views, and you look at some of the comments, it's clear a lot of these people just stumbled onto it because they think wedgies are funny. Uh, there's clearly not like 2.8 million of us all watching the same video. Uh, 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 I don't know. I feel like that's more apt to describe the things like that play that the girl was trying to do, and they're like the like the the random videos that people put yeah. out, like the vloggers or whatever. Like, <laughs> oh yeah. I feel like it is pretty uh, apt to describe the the community with with the the YouTube videos that get hundreds of thousands of views of the um the reposted stolen content yeah those I, get it, a ton definitely yeah those that's i i believe those are the that that's actually the community going and yes. finding yeah that is 
Yeah, definitely. The ones that are for us. I'm thinking about, like, the Debate Your Fate video, if you guys remember. Oh, yeah, that. absolutely. I love oh, that yeah. series almost, when it was put out. That's got almost 9 million views. And oh, yeah. You got to think, because Debate Your Fate, that's got its own audience. I have no idea about it. It might be ginormous. But you got to imagine, definitely, the, the, the fetishists who are driving up uh, the views in that. And I have no doubt... Uh, if you look at comments, if they're even still there at the time, you'd have tons of people, as as JCCW you pointed out, just saying more wedgies, do more wedgie videos, do more. <laughs> the the yeah. horniness, I think, and that's gonna be a big part of any board or any group or any site where people can comment. And yeah, they don't but, realize like they're being creepy or asking all, too much. All the, but that was also seven years ago, exactly, and so yeah. that is definitely plenty of time for all of these fetishists to rewatch it thousands of times. Yeah. I I'm I'm one of the people who rewatched it many times just because I was sure. like, I was one of the few people who actually watched all of the episodes of Debate Your Fate. Like I actually really enjoyed the actual series of it. Yeah. And then Seeing that was such a crazy surprise. It felt like going back into the 90s with JR and watching these wrestling videos and just randomly seeing a wedgie once in a while by accident. Yeah. Um, it was a surprise. It was a gift, honestly, and they weren't that they weren't aware of. And, um, I've gone back to it many times. It's not that great of a wedgie, uh, in my opinion. Uh, it, it, it's it was, totally yeah. It's, it's one of the We're ones in the public eye. I guess. Definitely, yeah. There's those videos I think are we give a boost to undoubtedly. How much? It's kind of hard to say because it's still unclear the scope of the community. But there's definitely a lot of us looking for videos on YouTube. Oh yeah. And I'm thinking now about the. Um, that series with the the two girls, they did like six or seven videos at the end. One of them was like kind of horror themed. Um, oh yeah, uh, oh yeah, you know I know exactly talking? what you're talking about. Yep. So and like we and we had that exact instance that I'm talking about where people were saying do more wedgie videos, do more wedgie videos, or or even some creatives. This is happens also. This is another pattern for us on like DA. There was, or I guess no, it was on YouTube. It was um that one the devil the devil creator girl um deville or something was her creator and she did like yeah yeah spam by the community to do more and things so youtube is where we can sort of see that flaw of the community very visibly that we are oh, just yeah. gonna spam anyone for content not everybody only the people who <laughs> who make the understand the rules the of the community i feel like that's an important point to make I guess our rules are like if you post wedgie content, you're free game. Is how it seems to be to it creatives. Should, it should not be that. It's but... not that. It, yeah, you're right. It shouldn't be, but that's generally historically how it's been, unfortunately. Yeah. Unfortunately. Yeah. Well, and so now with these f sort of free reign platforms uh it, it, i think it's an interesting contrast to bring it into the platforms that specifically focus on these things with patreon and only fans uh, there may be more to that but uh, these are the two that i'm aware of and these are the two that the three of us thought up Beforehand. Yeah, the focus um, on like monetizing fetish yes, content. The actual yeah, okay. business not, side not just the, of yeah, not just the fetish because they right. they're obviously not focused on wedgies. Unfortunately, yes. it'd be good if we got like wedgie on and it's just all wedgie patreons. But that's a dream. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So, <laughs> oh, that's amazing. What, that's an amazing name. Yeah, I. They are both of these things are definitely for porn but uh -huh. i'm curious if either of you see them as anything beyond that 
Yeah, I mean, it's funny to think, like, I started off when you we started this pointing out, like, it's how we adopt the platforms and turn them to our own ends. And we got to see humanities and not just ours as a fetish, but humanities, like, general desire to pornify everything they can. And they did that with Patreon to great effect, and they saw it as a very effective platform for posting uh, porn content, even though there are rules that say, like, don't do porn on Patreon, and people are like, we're going to do it anyway. And to great effect <laughs> and great popularity. And OnlyFans, right. same and, thing. It's not allowed with... to have porn, but those are porn platforms. And... So, yeah, yeah, exactly what you said. They've become great platforms for that, but also for the businessfication of the fetish. I've mentioned, like, the, one of the major trends I've seen in the community is a move toward, like, professionalization, towards more forms of content. In the past... We would have just creators posting for fun because they could and because they wanted to. Now it's like you can make money off of it. And this is a very a platform that makes it easier to make money off of. Um, and that's why DA, I think, is introducing its tiers where oh, it absolutely. had a lot of improvements over Lucky Fish forums, as you aptly pointed out, Niff. Patreon has improvements in terms of making money and yes. other sites like Eclipse for Sale, things like that, where there's wedgie content, same things. You can make the money off it and you can do it with differing degrees of difficulty or investment, which from a business perspective is pretty key. The really the real sad thing about like um like paying like the places where you pay for content. I find um, what's sad is that I find OnlyFans better than Patreon for only one simple mechanic, and is that they charge you by the month, no matter and no matter what point you start at. You can start halfway through the month, and you pay for an entire month, no matter what place of it you're in. Whereas in Patreon, the billing is at the end, is at the beginning of the month, and that's it. If you s- decide to subscribe to a Patreon page. On the thirtieth of a of a month, and the next day is the first. Well, you got to double pay, and that really stinks for yeah. people like me, where I'm like, I just want to pay for a month of content. That's all I want, and I mean, like, I I want to like, it's like, hey, I got a little bit of extra cash. I'll pay for JR's Patreon for one month, and it's like, yeah. well, now I got to wait until the end of this current month to subscribe to his thing for a month, and then I got to. Like it, it's just a hassle. Whereas yeah, with OnlyFans, it's real, it's really nice. If OnlyFans was actually like, if it had actually like amazing content across the board, I would be so down for it. But it just mm. doesn't. And yeah. uh, that's, I mean, there are. I mean, one of the biggest. There are one of the biggest problems with uh, OnlyFans' content is the idea of um, having a page you have to buy into. And then locking more content behind more paywalls, which is a strategy yes. a lot of a lot of a lot of OnlyFans creators make, and it really really hurts. Like it, it hurts the consumer a lot because it's like, hey, I really like this pay. Hey, I really like what this uh, model like looks like, and they their previews look like they're making good t- content. I subscribe to the OnlyFans. Oh, I got to pay an extra fifteen dollars after paying ten dollars just to see one three minute video. Yes, Fun. yes, that's terrible. <laughs> yes, and that that's is Patreon. I think is a better version of OnlyFans. Purely because for that, for that reason alone, yeah. <laughs> purely okay. because you are n- there is never anything like that. Like there, ha- I'm I'm subscribed to a page to a Patreon that has consistently paused billing because they don't post. They feel like they're not posting enough. And whereas, like you can go to higher tiers on Patreon, which Jr. doesn't do. Which I'm very glad. Like it's, it, you only pay ten dollars a month for everything, mm-hmm. and you get the entire backlog. The the that is one thing that only that Patreon has above OnlyFans is like you pay one time and you get the entire backlog of everything that they've ever done in one payment. Yeah. It's really nice for places like JR's Patreon. And 
Only fans thousands of, of hours of content. Only fans is one specific person, whereas Patreon is multiple different creators, especially in in JR's case, it's multiple different people. So it caters to multiple different people, and you only have to pay that one time fee of ten dollars. To get the entirety of the catalog of what he has to offer you, a lot of which is I only believe... fans. Is only fans video only, or is there other kind of? No, there's there's pictures. Picture, there's stuff, pictures, but, but it's pictures it's pictures too. It's entirely really, you okay. go for the videos. Only yeah. fans. No, of course. That's I hadn't even thought of it as anything other than like a video sharing site. But it only makes sense, pictures. I only ask because like when we think about a Patreon. Others like a Between Two Cheeks have had great success in it. Killer WC with pictures. And uh, me and uh, and Anime Panties obviously had our successful Patreon on there. It's, As a creative in the community, it sounds like OnlyFans is just if you're a consumer and you like videos and models and you like getting ripped off, you go OnlyFans. <laughs> Patreon, I, it, you can go and you use it. And you can actually post, and you can post a variety of content, and you can engage with the community that way, and you can have them interact in polls and things. What um, I... A lot of mechanics you The can. difference that I see in Patreon versus OnlyFans is that Patreon is for a creator that can do a numerous amount of things. Maybe not a jack-of-all-trades, but a numerous amount of things, and that's the appeal of Patreon versus... Only fans, you are going to follow a specific person because you are interested in that specific person and you're looking for basically pornographic things of that specific yeah. person. Yeah, the and videos so and images. Patreon okay. is generalized where only fans is specific. And I I believe that Patreon is a better platform because it appeals to so many more different people. And OnlyFans yeah. is you're you're working on a very specific time limit where you're 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 working on yourself and you have to keep yourself in shape or in some kind of body image. Because otherwise you're not going to have any fans. If you if your body <laughs> like that's yeah. why people are subscribed to you on OnlyFans is if your body runs out of time or uh, you get out of shape or whatever, you are going to lose the subscribers. Versus Patreon, yeah. you have the option to have all of these different models and creators and things that, that JR employs. That in that model, yeah. he is he's essentially adapted the uh, many vid many vids or clips for sale model and yeah, turned it into sale, yeah. a much more profitable and a much better model than those platforms can provide. At least yeah. looking at it from the. Uh, from the content creator's perspective. Sure. Yeah, it sounds like, and correct me if this is wrong, but like OnlyFans is a place where you build uh, yourself as a product, whereas Patreon is you can build a brand. Yes, absolutely. So as from a creative perspective, as a consumer perspective, it's what do you want? You want one creative and their porny videos. And I'm sure, obviously, there's an appeal for that. There always has been. Uh, on any number of platforms. That's why many of these porn sites exist as they do. But yeah, for us creatives, clearly, and it's been shown, there's a great use for sites uh, like Patreon for us to post art, to post videos, to interact and build a brand, which is something that's kind of new to the community. Obviously, Between Two Cheeks is the most obvious example of someone who's done it well. I uh, can argue with that with JR's per, JR's Patreon. 
Yes, I would he's agree the, because if we league. call if we call um, Wedgie Girls a brand, which we don't really, it but is. it would count. It is, that, and I would agree. I would agree. I agree with you that it definitely is, and it's that what Killer WC's uh, done with his magazine uh, between two cheeks with the uh, uh, the universe he's... he had of characters. Those are brands. Killer WC has any... not done a magazine. He's he's starting to do a comic. But sorry, yeah. Danger Wedgier. Danger is Wedgier. The zine. Sorry, did the magazine, the zine. That is a brand. <laughs> sorry, thank yes. you for correcting me. Yes. yes. Oh, I, I'm uh, going to. So those are the brands. I have to. As you should, yeah. I appreciate it. Um, so we don't have many established brands. A Patreon is a good place to build them, definitely. But it's and starting to, and brands. that's the positive. Yeah, it's starting definitely. to. It's a place to build them, and people can do it, and are starting to do them. Like we said with the zine. Danger right. Wedgie is awesome zine. Yeah, he came out of nowhere and started that. Yeah. And it's blown up. That's one of my favorite episodes that you did of Wedgie Talk. Is, uh, Thank you. Is yeah, with Danger Wedgie. Not, just, yeah. not even just because I... I, I have ne- I've never consumed an episode or a, an, an issue... Of that magazine, but how in depth you went with Danger Wedgie, with the process behind it, that it was so so good. I like, I loved all. Like, you didn't have to do anything with. All you had to do was ask him, "What's your process? How you like, how do you do it?" Like you just had to ask the most basic questions, and it was it. You went beyond that. It was so good. Oh man. It was so good. I'm glad. Yeah, thank you. No, I'm glad you enjoyed it. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's good examples, too. You're right. There's others, and DA's been a yeah. good starting point for this Right. in that we have college days, fortunate events is emerging as a brand because you have art, and that's what, for me, classifies it as a brand. It was multi-platform content huh. <laughs> um, that you're, uh, that's sort of you're using to promote it, and you're building it with more content. It becomes a brand. So, like I said, College Days is a great example. Hannah and Sarah, an even better example, um, because there's awesome art, and these characters are great, and they, um, everybody loves Hannah and Sarah. Huh. So, and I was like so slow to do that. I'm trying to retroactively do that. And I don't think it's super effective. Um, but in more recent cases, I've tried to do it with like Flame Over Darkness and stuff. To, but then not in the same way where there's continuous content. <laughs> Come well. on now. Look at the fucking views and favorites <laughs> of Flame Over Dark. I mean, yeah, Come you would on. think like if it's a brand, you're going to want to continue its longevity. In a place like Patreon, you can do that. And it's expected you do that because you have monthly posts, like monthly like payment periods. And it's like you got to keep delivering on new stuff. Um yeah. So yeah, uh, j- just to get into the super nitty gritty of these platforms, but yeah, it's a good place for the brand building and and the oh. monetization that DA hasn't yet come. Ha 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 ha. And all I'm hearing is that uh, DA is a springboard for all of these creators to go to other platforms. Exactly, yeah. exactly how it happened. With Lucky Fetish. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's an Isn't that funny? Yeah. And so it feeds exactly into my point that both of you were denying before of DA being the evolution of LF, especially you, Hans. Yeah. I it mean, because it was their first and. But because you're it, biased that's, for LF, but yeah, no, I'm not I kidding. no I. The bias works in the opposite regard of this <laughs> in this regard. I know I'm messing because with because DA the is the better version of LF, and mm-hmm. exactly how you described DA is exactly the way that it went for LF. There you go, and so DA. And so Wedgie Girls was a springboard for LF basically because it was necessary because we didn't have anything else and it was shut down because of the underage content. And then LF, Lucky Fetish, was a springboard for DA. And 
Yeah. That I think, was, I think and that was because, probably... that was because we already had policed our content to the level of uh, not having underage content. And it was because people had, by that time, recognized that there was a need for different kinds of content and different ways of sharing them. And then from there, after DA was established as a place to post content for wedgies, then yeah, I think it the was most precise way to put it is just then, that the the way we creatives and we consumers view platforms evolves as we need new ones. I think that's a good way to sort of sort clarify of, sort what of. we're talking about. Sort it's of. exactly what you're saying is that like yeah, as LF shuts down, we realize like we need a new place. Um, and we go to like DA I, and when I say shuts down, that's the wrong word. I just mean as it slows down in LF's case, well, yeah. as like a witch it, girl it's, does. It's accurate, as, as it's accurate see, originally and then afterwards it's not accurate. Yeah, it exactly. Accurate. As we see, there's like a need for monetization. We then embrace like a Patreon and as we, as the community evolves, as it's been doing and as it's always doing, we're going to need, it's, we're going to have different needs and different uh, purposes uh, in general, and right. that's where a lot and, of these different and boards so come in. Our needs are going to involve. I feel yeah. like I can summarize what you said in a better way uh, through saying the as we have grown as a community. Mm-hmm. We've recognized so what works and what doesn't, and we have adapted new platforms. And each yeah. platform identifies not just exactly how that need needs to be met, but also how a different need or that specific need can be met further and there have been plentiful times where that has been the case yeah if i think what's sticking me up is that you're giving the platforms a lot of credit for me i have to when, when have in reality to. they're not meant for us well we okay but like them. they weren't I, built for wedgie fetishes so it's, neither it's, was i think I, it's I, really but you, you this this is exactly where I have to countercross you with your own argument of speaking from a bias. Of, yes, yeah, yeah, you and I grew up on the Wedgie Girls in the later days and then the Lucky Fetish Board. And so we had all yeah. our content brought to us in one specific place. All of these websites and platforms and all of the, all these applications and whatnot, all of them fill a specific aspect of this community. Like, with the Lucky Fetish Board, I believe that it was able to be determined where the, bo where the community needed to go. And once we all translated to disc to uh, deviant art for the most part, um, then it's really like once we were able to have all of these tools at our disposal to actually post all of this content to the extent that we actually wanted to, then it truly outlined where the community was actually lacking for a lot of people hmm. and so yeah once yeah, we were able to do that then it became intimately clear it seems like to you as well hans but it definitely became clear to me just how fractured the community became especially looking at it from the days of lucky fetish because those days as sad as it is to hear to say that 
The days of Lucky Fetish have come and gone. They are long gone. And so we don't have that kind of community anymore. We have to embrace the new separation of interests. And this is really why I wanted to do this podcast is because I want to not only understand and ask the question behind why each platform exists and what role it fills, but also why we had to separate in the first place. And we have done a fantastic job of explaining that second part. All right, well, this has been another episode of the Best Book Club. Thank you so much for listening. Uh, Give me some kind of feedback. Comment, like, subscribe, favorite. Tell me what you want to hear different. Tell me if you would like to hear a topic specifically. Um, If you'd like to hear about a, a specific story. Whatever you'd like to hear. If you'd like to hear about a specific guest. If you'd like to hear from them, let me know. And until the next episode, whenever that happens, this is your host, Cicelum, aka Nupatora. <laughs>